Dear Flat Earthers, What in the world, pardon the pun, was that? Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that this finds you and your family doing well today. I want to thank you so much for joining me for the program. So uh, a couple, three months ago, I did a few videos on the flat earth theory. And the first video I did was just kind of one I threw together real quickly about the problem that the flat earth model presents with something as basic and common as sunsets and the sun illuminating the underneath side of the clouds. And then I decided to follow that up with an interview with uh, Dr. Danny Faulkner. And links to all of this down below there in the description. If you've not seen those videos and you'd like to watch them, links down below for you. So there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of different uh, problems with the flat earth model. And one which I have not yet dealt with is that of meteors. Uh, meteors are a thing. In fact, many of you watching this have probably seen one yourself. Uh, I myself have seen a meteor, in fact, not too long ago, just uh, around Christmas, this past Christmas. Kathy and I were driving in Montana uh, between Laurel and Billings, Montana, if you would like to know specifically, out in a rural area away from all of the lights. And uh, there was a meteor that went overhead and it, for a brief second, it, it lit up the whole area. Um, one of the more, I've seen a few meteors, but this is one of the more dramatic ones I've seen. So that was just about six months or so ago. But at any rate, meteors are a thing, but they are a problem for the flat earth model because generally speaking, the flat earth model says that the earth is this giant disc and right in the middle of the disc is the North pole, but the South pole doesn't even exist. Um, Antarctica rims the perimeter, the circumference of this giant disk on which we live. And so there's this giant ice wall called Antarctica that goes all the way around the disk and it keeps the oceans in, you know, from spilling off the edge of this flat earth. Um, <laughs> and despite all of the problems that that presents, I want to focus in on meteors and specifically how that works, how meteors work with the dome. Because you see, most flat earthers believe that there is a, a dome that covers this giant disk on which we live. And uh, according to some models, the sun and the moon, most flat earthers would say are inside of the dome and they revolve around the um, North Pole uh, with varying varying diameters because sometimes, you know, the sun and the moon around the Tropic of Cancer, others Tropic of Cancer, Capricorn, and that makes the different seasons, but that doesn't work either. But at any rate, not the subject of this video. How do meteors work with this dome that is covering the earth? Uh, because dear friends, most of us, myself included, we believe that meteors are these chunks of rock of varying sizes and that are hurtling through space at incredible rates of speed. And every once in a while, one of these chunks of rocks uh, comes near us and it comes into the Earth's atmosphere, enters the Earth's atmosphere. But as it does so, uh, as the Earth's atmosphere becomes more dense, the closer it gets to the Earth, the more friction there is with the rocks. It heats these rocks up so that they glow and most of them uh, explode before they ever hit the Earth. Uh, but every once in a while, one of these rocks does manage to hit the ground, and then that meteor becomes a meteorite. So, how does that work with the dome? Uh, the meteors are not crashing through the dome, of course. I don't think any flat earther would, would believe that, because then it would make a you know punch a giant hole in the dome, and all of the air would seep out into space. Um, the discussion of whether or not space even exists for the flat earthers, that's another thing. But uh, so the, the meteors aren't crashing through the dome. So therefore, meteors must be chunks of the dome that are falling off towards Earth. Now that brings up a couple of other questions that I would have. So if that's, how is it that chunks of the dome are falling off towards the Earth? If that's what is happening, 
how is it that these chunks are reaching such phenomenal rates of speed? I mean, far, far faster than what terminal velocity would be just if you, say, went up in a helicopter or an airplane and dropped a rock out of it. Uh, it's going to fall pretty fast, but it's not going to reach speeds anywhere near fast enough to uh, glow and explode because of the friction of the air. That just doesn't happen. doesn't happen to people who jump out of airplanes, so it's not going to happen to chunks of the dome, this supposed dome falling off. So that's a problem. And also, <laughs> if these are chunks of the dome falling off, did God not make the dome more sturdy? I mean, you believe that this is a dome that God made over the earth. And I believe in Scripture, in the inerrancy, inerrancy, infallibility, insufficiency of Scripture, it is authoritative. I believe I'm a young earth creationist. The whole nine yards go down the line. I'm there. Uh, but you believe that, this, uh, that God made this dome and apparently did not make it even to OSHA standards? I mean, it's just falling apart and chunks of it are falling off. Does that make any sense at all? And who's in charge of repairing the dome? Who, who does that? Does that make any sense? None of this does, dear friends. So this is just one of the problems with the flat earth. And some flat earthers would say, well, yeah, but there's a, there's a problem because all the meteors seem to fall uh, down, you know, from uh, upward, down, lower, uh, downward trajectory. Whereas if the globe, if the <laughs> if the Earth was a globe, then some of them would be going up. Well, fact of the matter is, is some meteors do appear to rise up because of the shape of the Earth. And here's just a couple of examples. But if you would like a more detailed explanation, uh, down below, also in the description, is a link written by Dr. Danny Faulkner about meteors and the, the problem that they pose for the flat earthers and uh, how some of them do indeed actually appear to rise from our perspective here on this terrestrial ball. So uh, flat earthers, what, do you, what, what are meteors? I have yet to see an explanation for what they are, at least not a cogent one. Um, dear friends, I will be doing another video on the flat earth and it will be coming up next week and stay tuned for that because i'm going to be, going to be doing an interview about something really big that is coming up and it should put an end a final end to the debate about the shape of the earth something really really big is coming up some of you watching this probably already know what it is but um, that's a little teaser for what's coming up next week. I will be doing this interview on June the 10th, Monday, June the 10th. And um, hopefully we'll get it up on my channel um, the next day, June the 11th. All right, so stay tuned for that. Um, we got something big coming up for the Flat Earthers in the shape of the Earth. All right. Thank you very much, dear ones, for watching. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you all.